Welcome back to American Agenda. The Biden administration and Democrats are in Congress publicly calling for a regime change in Israel, and they made it clear when they want Benjamin Netanyahu out as president. But will this hardline stance against one of the strongest U.S. allies change the minds of Democrat voters? Now, Chief White House correspondent James Rosen has more on this story from our D.C. newsroom. James. Katrina and Bob, good afternoon. This seemingly coordinated campaign against Prime Minister Netanyahu signals a fundamental shift from the Biden administration. At the outset of the Israel-Hamas war, back in October, President Biden embraced the prime minister, literally and figuratively. But a series of clashes between the two aged leaders over military aims and tactics has now left the Biden White House pursuing regime change in Israel more vigorously than it ever did against Hamas in Gaza. Earlier today, President Biden confirmed that Senator Schumer's attack on Netanyahu was coordinated with the White House. Something retired Rear Admiral John Kirby, spokesman for the White House National Security Council, confirmed to reporters yesterday. We fully respect his right to, to make those remarks and to, to decide for himself uh, what he's going to say on the Senate floor. Um, he obviously feels strongly about this. We understand and respect that. Um, uh, this, this wasn't about approval uh, or disapproval or editing in any way, uh, but, it was a, but he did give us a heads up that he was going to do it. Netanyahu, Israel's longest-serving prime minister, possesses a long memory, including of his 2015 re-election campaign when President Obama's former national field director and other Democratic operatives were dispatched to Israel to work directly with a nonprofit group to try to rally support for the prime minister's ouster. Five years later, in 2020, this reporter, working for the Sinclair Broadcast Group, had the chance to ask the prime minister about that period. Looking back at that episode in 2015, I asked the Prime Minister, do you regard that President Obama was engaged in a form of election interference in Israel at that time? I think, the Prime Minister said, that there were certain preferences. You know, the fact that State Department money was used, that was clearly inappropriate, he said. But I, I think we don't live in a, a pristine world, and you know, governments have their interests. They usually express it in one way or the other. And they did, in my case against me, unquote. Asked if he believed that President Obama was involved in that, the prime minister said, well, his advisors. Back to you guys in New York. James, thanks for sharing that. Appreciate it. James Rosen. I have known Prime Minister Netanyahu for a very long time. While we have vehemently disagreed on many occasions, I will always respect his extraordinary bravery for Israel on the battlefield as a younger man. I believe in his heart he has his highest priority is, as, is the security of Israel. However, I also believe Prime Minister Netanyahu has lost his way by allowing his political survival to take the precedence over the best interests of Israel. All right, well, that's the moment that we're talking about right there. Senator Schumer calling out Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the Senate floor. To continue the conversation, let's bring in our experts, distinguished professor at Tura University and Newsmax contributor Thane Rosenbaum and retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer. Gentlemen, welcome on this Friday afternoon. Sure. Thane, I, I want to start with you here. I, when I saw Chuck Schumer doing that, I was shocked because I thought, okay, here is an American senator who is calling for getting rid of one of our closest allies' leader. That just seemed incredibly, I'm just going to say, wrong and, and strange to me. What do you think is behind Schumer and the Biden administration calling for a new election, a regime change in Israel? Well, quickly, I think Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I think that Schumer wakes up every morning and worries that she's going to run for the Senate and challenge him. Uh, everyone in the Democratic Party is terrified of the progress progressive left. So everybody's trying to impress the squad and Bernie Sanders and the progressive left. The irony is that Schumer is lecturing a democratic country about elections, a country surrounded by autocracies and theocracies. And, and then secondly, you know, th you may not like Netanyahu, but when it comes to this war, he is reflecting the will of the people. It is very democratic war. In fact, if anything, he's holding the Israelis back. The Israelis would have been in Rafa before. They're upset that he's sitting back worrying about diplomacy. They're sick of it. And I let, lastly, I would just say to Schumer to show some respect, because to my knowledge, none of his children have been beheaded as babies. 
and none of his daughters, if he has them, have been gang raped and mutilated. And until something like that happens, don't lecture Israelis about what they should be doing in this war. Yeah, sometimes I think people forget what happened and the horrific details on October 7th here. Colonel, two-part question here. What does this do yeah. about the relationship between the United States, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Biden administration, Benjamin Netanyahu? But do you think Joe Biden put Chuck Schumer up to this? Because Biden, he can't really come out and do something like this. But, as we saw, Senator Schumer could. Well, look, uh, Thane is correct. This is all about politics. And I would a argue, Bob, that the, 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 to answer the last part of your question, this is all about domestic politics. This is about the Democrat Party and the Hamas caucus not uh, wanting to go along with Biden's reelection. This is uh, here in my state, North Carolina. There's a lot of folks under, uh, who who are voting against or not voting to support the president. Minnesota the same, Michigan the same. This is all about margins and political futures. And it's it's shameful, Bob, that we now see a foreign policy being led by badly informed but desperate numbers in politics domestically. It's horrible. So let's go to the second part of your, the first part of your question. Uh, yeah, this is our relationship with the Israelis will endure. They are doing the right thing. With that said, can you imagine Tony Blair, Prime Minister Blair of England, in the spring of 2002, calling for the removal of George Bush and Dick Cheney saying, you know, we don't want them to be in charge. That's what this is like. So I think a lot of Israelis are going to look at this and say, Certain political leaders can't be trusted, but I think overall they understand the United States, and most of us are with them because they have every right to obtain a, a decisive victory over Hamas based on what happened on 7 October. I think that uncommitted vote up there in Michigan, those 100,000 people under the, again, under the direction of Rashida Tlaib, right. I think that had a lot to do with this, and it set off the alarm bells, and now this has happened, uh, mm -hmm. international relations catastrophe. Thane Rosenbaum. Colonel Tony Schaefer, gentlemen, enjoy the weekend. Thank you both. Thank you.